It adorns your head, whether you are male, whether you are female, and it goes everywhere with you from the day you are born and oftentimes till you depart, you are wearing it as part of your daily ensemble. So it goes without saying that you must prepare for it. You must work on it. And now we get to learn that you should drink water for it. You should eat nutritious meals for it. We tagged our package all angles, all perspectives. My name is Thelma Obaze. Pe yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Another one. Yes, over. so <laughs> another you, banger. Let me start by saying you look amazing. <laughs> you girls. So, so, like you said, the conversation started yesterday, and we learned that the evolution of hair is a reflection of our dynamic and a rich cultural diversity. Yes. Well, it's time for some exercise, you know, yoga yesterday, yoga today. Mm. Exercise should be a daily thing, should be a lifestyle. And that's why we want to remind you again today to get in the fitness exercise mood. Yoga is next. Walk towards your front. Namaste. Hello to everyone. I am Dipti Ranjan Mohanty, a trained yoga teacher from High Commission of India, Abuja. Now we will do Ustra Asana. Ustra means camel posture. Those who are suffering in arthritis, knee problem, they should avoid this posture. And those who are suffering in a lumbago or heart condition or any sleep disc, they should avoid this posture. Now, bend your right leg, then bend your left leg. Sit above your both heel. Both heel should separate and both big toe touch to each other. Now, stand on your both knees. Slightly separate your both knee. Bring your right palm above your right heel. Then left palm above your left heel. Bend your neck back. Bend from your lumbar. Push your hip front. Both thigh parallel to, both thigh perpendicular to the floor. Normal breathing. Now breathe out, slowly come up. Once more, breathe in, bring your right palm, place above your right heel. Then left palm above your left heel. Bend your neck back. Bend your trunk from your lumbar. Push your hip front. This Pushtrasana, camel posture, is extremely useful for defective eyesight. This is useful in relieving back and neck pain. It helps to reduce fat over the abdomen and hips. It is helpful in digestive problems and cardiorespiratory disorders. On weekend deal today is all the perspectives and all the angles that it pertains to your hair. We know that many people are often very confident when they have a fantastic hairdo on. Yesterday we learned that natural hair needs a lot of maintenance, but once you get used to it, you'll see that your hair begins to glow and it expresses you very well. So Francis, as usual, has been working assiduously to bring new information, manage it with the old ones we already know, and give us a clear expression of how our hairs should be. 
Francis. Where did you go this time? Ma? African hair is beautiful. African hair is unique. Um, African hair is our identity, is who we are. That's what makes us very, very different from, you know, others. Makes us stand out. You can notice our hair, the texture, the curl patterns, you know, um, and how it grows out of our head. Unlike the Caucasian hair that grows down and straight, our hair grows up like a crown. So I always tell people that, you know, African women are all queens and they should rock their African hair with pride and dignity. We have relaxed hair, we have natural hair. Um, natural hair, there are different ways people choose to maintain their hair, um, whether relaxed or natural, and weave ons are part of that you know, trend. Um, some people include hair extensions, um, but in recent times, I think they are doing a lot more wigs. Um, you have Brazilian wigs, you have Peruvian, you have all this Indian and all of that that have sort of flooded the, mar the market and almost taking away our identity as Africans. While there is a good side to it, there's also the negative side to it. So the good side is basically weave-ons being used as protective styling, like weave-ons, braids, you know, twists and cornrows. So um, that is the good side of it, where you're using it as a protective style. But where people have refused to identify with their African culture, their heritage, which is our kinky coily hair, which is the hair that grows out of our hair, this texture that is so unique, so beautiful. When people are in denial and saying, I do not like this, it's almost like self-hate. And then they take on straight Caucasian style of hair, you know, that is not, it has nothing to do with our African heritage or who we are as a people. They wear those um, hairs 99% um, of the time. You can't really tell if they're really African or if they're really proud to be African. So I think that's the downside of it. Dreadlocks are just basically when people allow their hair to grow out of their hair, just matted without combing it and it takes its own shape and form. And um, I'm talking about, you know, how it has evolved over the years. That was what it was really known for. And then people will call it Dada, you know, or oh, this hair was never combed or this or that, you know, but it does have some cultural like significance and it's dates back and it can be traced to even, you know, so many cultures across the continent. Um, you all, you're familiar with the Rastafaras, you know, you're, you're familiar with, there's so many native communities that identify with that hairstyle and it means so much to them. Um, in recent times, um, the hairstyle has evolved into different types of locks. Now we have sister locks, we have uh, fox locks. We have so many types of locks out there now that have become a, like a fashion statement. Yes, braided hair is one of the ways that we have expressed our African hairstyles over the years. Um, braids are as far back as our culture. Um, from Fulani braids, Ghana braids, and even twists now that is so common. It's also one of the ways people put their hair in protective styling. The thing about braids is that you can style it in different patterns and with different designs. And apart from it being a fashion statement, it also allows the hair thrive. So relaxed hair is basically a situation whereby people use a chemical to straighten out their hair. And most of these chemicals contain very toxic components like sodium hydroxide or calcium hydroxide, which are very, very, could be detrimental to our health as a people. So you see a lot of women wearing wigs, and sometimes you never know that the reason why they're wearing wigs is not because they want to wear wigs, but because they've actually damaged their natural hair and they're suffering from severe hair loss. A lot of um, parents take their children out for occasions and they want to twin with their children. They want to make certain hairstyles and have their children make similar hairstyles. Now, what you do not understand or what they do not understand is that the children are still growing, their scalp is still maturing, their hair is still maturing. So when you put a lot of tension on their hair, what you do is that you damage their scalp from a very young age. And you see a lot of young girls um, growing up and struggling with hair growth. Their hair doesn't really grow, it's, it's, it's stunted, or sometimes they're just losing hair. 
completely with scanty hair and all of that. And what this does on the long run is that it affects their self-confidence. What I would say to African mothers is let your children's hair breathe so that when they grow up into young, beautiful women, their confidence is intact. They're not looking for hair. They're not running around looking for wigs to cover their hair or to make them feel complete. Our focus on Weekend Deal today, the air, all angles, all perspectives. Thank you, Francis. The African hair, our identity, our beauty, and our confidence. Right now, joining the conversation, yes, Mr. Famous Salihu. He is the president of the, he's the chairman of Buari Area Council Branch of National Association of Hair and Beauty Practitioners of Nigeria. Mr. Famous, Comrade Famous, you're welcome to our show. Yeah, so I'm going to start right. What is the ratio? Because since yesterday we've been having guests, we just had a fem one female stylist who was a salon. What is the ratio of men to women stylists? Do we have more male stylists or female stylists? We have a more female stylists. You do? Yeah, of course. Um, in the beauty industry, especially when it comes to uh, hair stylists, uh -huh. um, we have a 95% 90, of... Uh, of women. Okay, but uh, who does better, male? I, I, a lot of women who prefer male styles. Tell me, what do you think? I mean, when you go to a salon and you see a man, <laughs> it just gives you that confidence for a man to delve into this world. That man exactly knows what he's doing. So when we see male stylists, we are happy. Um, tell me, who do you prefer anyways? <laughs> they, they both do good work. There's a certain confidence that a woman brings because she understands. She knows what, is, what it is like to want a particular hairstyle. She's been there before. She can enter into that world with you. But then the man, okay. if you find a man doing hair, hey, that you know saying. that he has... The passion is there. He will he be an organic. And the woman yes. is coming with an emotional attachment okay. to beauty, to hair, to okay. every woman. But Commissary, <laughs> will you tell us? Um, the, uh, there is a uh, popular saying that um, what men can do, women can do better. Uh -huh. So I have to say it on the reverse side now. Okay. That what women can do, men, men can, can do, do better. better. Okay. Um, there is this special attention that men gives because they are dealing with opposite sex. Women to women, they are used to each other. You know, when women, oh, I have this lady, I don't like it, her body language. You understand? Then men, they are dealing with uh, opposite uh, sex, mm -hmm. so they are this special attention, and they have a lot to prove that I'm a man, but I can do it better. Mm -hmm. Okay, you everything understand? is coming from the inside. From yes, the inside. perhaps that's why they told us even yesterday that as you nourish your body, you should you nourish, nourish your, your hair. Yeah, eat healthy; it impacts yeah, your that, hair. Yeah, that 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 reminds me, because if we are talking about hair, go, uh, the growth of hair. Um, the growth of hair has to do with a whole lot of vitamins mm. in your body. Mm. Then once you lose those vitamins, then there is a tendency that you begin to, uh, to lose your hair. Okay, it happens. But, yes. but you diverged a bit. Our initial, though you have spoken a bit about it, and my initial, my initial uh, angle was why are more men coming into this beauty business okay, where women hitherto took center stage. You now said it may be the business side of it. Yeah, look at so the business. So is it just business for men? Not just the business. Because if you are into um, hair and beauty industry, meaning you can you can render any of the services, which is haircuts, mm. hair making, makeup, uh, pedicures and manicures, mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's all about beauty industry, not just hair alone. It's hair and beauty. Good time, when we're younger, Natural hair was it. Even our mothers, you know, I hardly saw my mother ever fixing anything on her hair, except once in a while she would braid, use attachment, and that was rare. But over time, it's now fixing, we're wearing wigs, we're wearing weaves. Oftentimes, you hardly see people's natural hair, even though we know it's coming back. As you go to Patakot now, they are focused on weaves. You may call it weave on. And they tell us that the prices are often steep. 
But in spite of what it may cost, <laughs> many women, mm. men don't wear wigs, do they? They don't. <laughs> <laughs> many women are willing to go extra, extra miles. miles. Not one extra mile. They're taking Plane. many miles. <laughs> fly, fly. They're taking flight. <laughs> and now the hair could even go into millions. Yeah. But Patakot is where the research was done. Let's see what they found. 10 to 15 years backward, um, we know uh, what most ladies usually go on is either they're on this or on a cornrow or even thread. Yes, some even go with the vibe of the 90s, putting on their afro. A few of them back then, we have Danny, we have Miss Rollers, we have Kinky. They actually tried our uh, looks and all that. But compared to today, the 21st century, where we have progressed into, we have wonderful sophisticated hairs. So I want you to see my transformation when I wear a good classic hair. And this is my hair. So I'm pumping it before wearing. Wow. So how do I look? Hmm? Obviously I look better than when I, I wasn't wearing one. I look more classic and I look more sophisticated, like a queen. This is how every woman should look. When someone looks at you, the first thing they look at is your face, which your hair is also part of it and gives you confidence, helps you, you know, stand out. If I add my hair, it makes me look outstanding, so just watch me. Can you see the transformation? <laughs> Confirm now. How do I look? Pretty, right? That's the power of hair. So for like seven years, eight years ago, what was trending was Brazilian and Peruvian. And you see all ladies going all out for it. Peruvian, Brazilian, but it's no longer trending anymore. If that's to say, even 10 to 15 years from now, what is running now might not actually be trending because we work with trend. Go straight night like the Odogu, when it comes to hairs, and it ranged from um, 6 inch to 32 inch. There's even a way you can even discuss with your suppliers in Vietnam that will give you up to 40 inch. We have bouncy hairs, like the one behind me. These are basically for brides, those who are getting married. We call this one magic coin. It's 14 inches of magic coin. It's 14 inches of magic coin, I can get it at 40. This basic coin is like 95,000. This same thing where I showed you before, this is shorter and this is longer. This is now the raw hair comes, then when we are done working on it, it will be transformed to this place. Back in the, in the days, they don't used to wear wigs. What they do is they come, buy the revons or attachments. They will sit down and will sew the hair. But now life made easy because most people are nursing mothers, working class, who are busy. So people don't really have that spare time to come and sit down in a beauty parlor and start making hair that will consume the whole of that day. So when you walk into a shop, just pick up a wig and you're good to go. When you're back from work and you're exhausted, you just pull up the wig to ease up that stress. This is what we call revolution. Life made easy. If I don't have the time and energy to sit down for someone to drag my hair all in the name of plating and making, I mean, I just do my corn rolls with normal weaving, that's normal weaving, and then I wear it and I go, it saves me time, it saves me energy, it saves me stress. If you want to get very good hair, don't look at the price, you have to save up to get quality hair. I like to look good, that's the kind of person I am, I don't mind how much it costs. Talking about the prices of hair, it differs, it works with the grade of hair. There are some hairs, like the one I'm wearing, this is a Vietnam Super Double Draw Pixie Coin. This is a 12A grade, which is the highest of all grades. This hair also comes in grade 8. These grade 8 are way cheaper. That doesn't mean they are fake, they are not fake. But the durability is not as long as this, which is the grade 12. Those grade 8 can fall under the price range of 30 something, 35, 36, 37, 38 to 40,000. We also have the bone straight hair. This one comes in single drum, which are the cheapest. Single drum bone straight can be as cheap as. 25,000 is still very beautiful. Just that the tip of it is a bit very scanty. Don't just fit the hair how it looks. You have to work with the grid, work with the different texture of hair, which is the single drawn, the double draw, and the super double draw. I'm trying to make my 
beautiful customer to look more beautiful than going out. A big car. Come and see this transformation. The hair is given. Yes. This is to make it look shiny and the fragrance. Very nice. I hope you love your hair. Yes, of course. Week 7 women since 1900. You don't know what to do? Slam on your wig and you're ready to go. Your hair is looking terrible. Mm. Slam on the wig. If you want to change your look overnight, slam on another wig. Uh, wig business indeed. Our hair business is serious business. Our guest is here and I'm turning to him right away. All right. Yes, hair business is serious business in Nigeria. How serious is it? And why are wigs and weavers? So steep, like Tama would like to say, what's going on? Um, the fashion is uh, the the fashion industry is evolving, so the hair and beauty industry is evolving as well. It has gone beyond just making hair. So through hair making, through your facial look, people have been able to sell themselves to the public. Like you see, people going, "Wow, I love this kind of this kind of hair." Madam, please, how, where did you make your hair? So, I'm a hairstylist. You, you know, you tell us we don't manage our hair well. You tell us your hair is breaking. But we're coming to you and you're fixing things on our hair that is impacting negatively. At the end, the same hair we're trying to preserve, we may end up losing it. Yeah, the, the loss of hair um, has to do with, uh, with, the, with the person in question as well. Not just... Um, the hairstylist, mm. because uh, let's look at two um, the uh, two uh, two causes of hair loss. One is biochemical basis, the other one is gen is, is genetic, is genetic. The one, the first one that's where I want let me, let me use this opportunity to call on Navdak to come into the hair and beauty industry. We have so many adulterated uh, products. products in mm. the market. Relaxer, shampoo and a conditioner. Even, in fact, people are producing it everywhere oh, wow. at the back of their houses, especially the conditioner and um, shampoo. So now, those adulterated materials, is, is chemical, they are chemical based. So that destroys hair as, uh, very, very easy. Then the, the, the one that has to do with genetics oh. is inherited. You, if you trace that, you will see that either the mother, the grandmother, the great grandmother is a, is something that has affected the lineage, so it's mm. gene, it's genetic. It's genetic. Then the other one that is be, that is has to do with um, chemical base mm. is the one that really concerns us most. Okay. Ah, this thing you want, yes, it's fine on patients, but Thelma, the texture of your hair or the way your hair is now, if you add this one to it, it may. No, the the situation is this. I've seen a situ a scenario. Why a particular Eliza was recommended for a customer, and the customer said, no, oh. I've been using this for okay. years. For a long time. Okay. So that's what I use. Okay, when you talked about people staying in their, back, uh, their, their backyards and make um, hair products, it just, uh, just brought um, the issue of... Adulterated. Uh, yeah, adulterated and all that, but it just but also brought the issue of um, employment within this sector. You know, I know the hair sector is contributing so much to our economy, to our GDP. Do you think, for example, I know that uh, even these fronters and uh, whatever we're using, yeah. ladies are learning to make them. A lot. Ladies are learning, and I think that, will, that is beautiful. If they are making them here, why are they still so expensive? Why are they, the prices are still Or why expensive? are we still importing? importing? Why are we importing? Is it, I don't know. If you look at um, most of this uh, hair, some of them are produced in, have been produced in Nigeria. Some are imported. No, sometimes we don't seem to believe in what we in have our own here. Products. Yes, in our own product. That's one problem. Hi. Somebody will tell you, we have some hair that are very good here. Somebody will tell you, what I prefer is Indian hair. Hmm. What I prefer is Brazilian hair. We need to thank you very much, Comrade Famous. Thank you, Sally, who you've taken us into areas that we never even deeply understood. And now we have a clearer picture. Perhaps we will now be more understanding with our stylist. 
when we ask them to do jobs here and there for <laughs> us. Uh, Comrade Famous Sally, who are the chairman, Browie Area Council, branch of National Association of Hair and Beauty Practitioners of Nigeria. We're actually going to Channel 10 in Lagos, okay. where they are doing dreadlocks. Okay, well, NTO <laughs> Channel 10 has put together this contribution. Let's watch it and learn. <laughs> Hair is an essential part of the African identity and an important medium of self-expression and strong confidence. Different hairstyles are one and this showcases an expression of different personalities through the different colors and length people choose. Dreadlock is a hairstyle that has become prevalent in our times. It can be naturally grown or be hair extensions. We seek to understand the motives behind this choice of hairstyle in both men and women in the contemporary society. I was told that Shongo, the, the god of iron then, is always, also on dread. He always spits his hair like this before. And I think I, I feel good when I'm on it. And I'm also very comfortable. It's my choice, man. It's just fashion. It's just his fashion. For me, I'm an artist. I dance to it. I like dread. I love it. I put on dreads because I like it on people. It's, it's the likeness for dread. Apart from the traditional dreadlock or hair extensions, people who choose to grow it go through this process. So for how long can the person carry this before he comes back again to do it? Two weeks. Two weeks. It's something that when you do it, you will have time to do other things. So if you are somebody that is very busy, you can go on dread. And depending on your look also, if you look yourself that dread can fit you or someone advise you that dread can fit you, you can go for it. Basically, I was born a dread, but my parents now, all those days, they, they cut it off. But as time goes on, I fell in love with it. And whatever dress I'm wearing when I'm on dreads, I look good. So it's, I think it's, a, it's an African thing. People like see those um, wearing dread like they are fetish or, or they are into something. But now it's for fashion mostly. People, people wear it for fashion. If you choose to lock your hair, Please note that care should be taken to always keep it neat through the following methods. One, you will make sure you wash your dread and you relock it. Because if you didn't wash it, one, as in, you will look dead. You need to wash it regular like every day and you also need to relock it every two, two weeks. Bro, I'm very hairy. So I, I do it one, once in a, every one, one week or sometime one and a half week. Every time. That's how it is. It has like shampoo, um, that you use in washing dreads so that it will be neat and there won't be dirt inside. So you have to like wash it very well. The two types of locking we have is we have palm rolling locking and we have pizza locking. Dreadlock for both men and women have become a modern hairstyle, proudly worn by both the young and old, and no matter the reason for this choice, dreadlocks have come to stay. You're watching Weekend Deal, and uh, we're talking about uh, dreadlocks. Dreadlocks, dreadlocks. Yeah. And nowadays it's trending. It's trending, no, Many nothing spiritual up. about it anymore. <laughs> from, from what we see and yes. experience. But I miss those parties that they used to do, that a child... They're going to cut out dreadlock and we eat all that rice. Oh, God, what's going on? <laughs> I never I witnessed mean, it. I, I never did, witnessed oh, it. I did, I had but in the one. course of this show, we have Dada. Mm. You know, those who are born with yeah, it. We did, you know, the dreadlocks is yeah, the one we fashion, fix. Yeah. yeah. So we also have the Dada story yeah, coming from Ibadan okay. in the course of the show. But for now, uh, we spent some time with Susan. Susan has been doing some research. Mm. All through the week, she was asking questions <laughs> about our hair. Mm. How are we managing it? Mm. Do you have hair loss? Mm. That's how we got to know about um, alopecia. alopecia. I know that um, it was foreign before. Mm. The challenge is now home. Mm -hmm. We also have pattern 
baldness, yeah. and many other hair issues. Susan, I know you were asking us questions. Our hair, a symbol of identity and self-expression, often faces challenges that can impact its health and appearance. Today, we delve into the causes and potential solutions for three common hair issues. Alopecia, pattern balding, and hair discoloration. The health of our hair is influenced by an array of factors, including genetics, lifestyle, choices, and overall well-being. Alopecia, a term encompassing various forms of hair loss, can arise from factors like autoimmune disorders, hormonal imbalances, and stress, leading to patches of hair loss. Which is pattern baldness. Okay, the baldness that you see that runs in family, we call that endogenetic alopecia. You can also have alopecia areata, which can result from autoimmune. The body attacks the hair root itself and gives rise to patchy hair loss. You can have hair loss from traction, women that braid, that do tight braiding, that do cornrows that are tight, they can lose their hair at the margin of the hair, of the, around the forehead, you find that it's receding. We call that traction of the patient. You can have hair loss from chronic medical conditions like hypothyroidism, like some cancers. Pattern balding, also known as androgenic Alopecia is a common condition affecting millions worldwide. Genetic predispositions and the human DHT gradually miniaturize hair follicles. Typically, that one starts by the hair receding from the sides, the bite, what you call the bitemporary recession. It goes backwards slowly as the person ages, and everybody has these different degrees. There's no pain, there's no itching, there's nothing. Then there is the traction alopecia. This occurs mainly in women, African women who do things like cornrows, plating and all that. Over the years, they start from when they are children and they grow up. Um, their mother starts from when they are, start plating their, when they are children, when they grow up, they continue. So that pulls the hair at the margin of the hair, at the forehead. It pulls it. Initially, when they are grown up, once they pull it, it pulls out and it grows. But after repeated years of plating and plating, the hair, the hair becomes so damaged that it no longer grows. So you see a woman in which her hairline has received backwards. Hair discoloration, an uncertain concern, resolved from factors affecting natural pigments, excessive sun exposure, chemicals, aging, and medical condition can cause hair to turn gray, white, or brittle due to nutritional deficiencies. Proper hair care practices also minimizes damage from using quality hair products to maintaining a consistent routine. Every step matters. Some of them is just the observation that you are losing hair without any associated symptoms. While others, there will be associated symptoms of the underlying cause. People might not always relate that cause. For instance, a woman that gets pregnant and she started losing hair. Or a person that was treated for uh, a chronic condition was in for a long time, like six months, and then she discovers that he's losing hair. Regardless of the challenge you are facing, whether it is alopecia, pattern balding, or hair discoloration, understanding the root causes and seeking professional advice are pivotal steps. Remember, each strand tells a unique story and with proper hydration and care, that story can shine brightly. Thank you, Susan. It's actually so scary that a whole lot can happen to our hair, and it's actually happening to our hair. But um, let's come down, joining the conversation now. is a medical expert, a, a, a physician, a consultant physician, and a dermatologist. And I'm talking about Boyega Olarinoye. Doctor, you're welcome to Weekend Deal Studios. Thank you very and I'm much. going to start. Is there any hope for my edges? You know, I've been talking about edges. <laughs> <laughs> See, you think people don't understand. <laughs> Tell me, I've been laughing now. That's my own. Is there any hope for my edges? I say yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes, yes, there is. And not just because you're asking me to say yes, because there's actually hope for the edges. Oh, nice. Yes, there is. Okay, so what can we do, for example? Tell us some of the things that can happen if our edges are gone. Hitherto, we had 
good edges. We're doing this uh, Ghana weaving, Chuku style, and we're looking all, you know. All so, there. All there. But we can't do that anymore. We cover it up. What can we do to recover our hairlines? Well, I think it's, first of all, it's important to highlight that um, hair loss is a symptom that can be caused by many conditions. So it's one symptom, many causes. So even for hair loss at the edges, it's important to be able to decipher what the cause is. It's in that way that I can now chart a course towards management. However, I haven't said that the common causes of losses of the edges in Africa, in the African context, is attraction alopecia or attraction hair loss. So for that, so there's an algorithm for management, which starts mm -hmm. from medical grade treatments to at the end of the spectrum. Um, if that wouldn't work or from evaluation, you think the hair loss is significant, then you can consider hair for other forms of hair restoration. At the end of the spectrum will be tran hair transplant. Well, this is something, it's like what she was saying, you know, we've also, we just said and laughed about it yesterday. Yes. The edges have gone for a while, mm -hmm. but it's not as though the hair is falling off. Mm -hmm. Yes. But the edges, you know, they went, mm. then some treatment brought back a few Some, strands. Yeah. Yeah, yes. But not the way it was it before. Be. Yes. So we are Thank now you. learning that there is hope for it. Mm. So now yes. you're giving us a broad range of hope, hopeful, <laughs> hopeful <laughs> detours. So yes. now the transplant is at the very end. Yes, Tell I us am. about some other processes before that we, we can engage in. Yeah. Oh, because yes. some of us may not even need transplant. Oh, now. certainly. The way I explain to patients is, mm. You see, the, the hair is like grass, just as an analogy, growing on a lawn that's on the scalp. Um, so sometimes if you have, particularly in the case of attraction hair loss, you have some hairs that they're gone already. The soil in that area is destroyed. So it's not going to grow. So it's scarred already. You have some areas that, okay, fine, the hair may not be growing very well, but there's still something that can sprout and the soil is good. So in such areas, you can have medical treatments that can help to improve or bring out those little hairs that are not growing very well. Some areas, it's not likely to grow no matter what you do. Wow. So based on your management, um, the, that proportion of hairs that can, area that can grow hair and area that cannot grow hair that determine whether the person needs transplant or something more aggressive or not. You said something among the causes of hair loss and then yes. pregnancy. I thought it was a myth. Because most times, uh, was, you just have yeah. a baby, they start using a local palette. They'll say, Peking, don't chop your hair. <laughs> they say, Peking, don't chop your hair. It's everywhere. What is the relation between pregnancy and hair loss? Okay, thank you very much. Good question. So, uh, it's established. Pregnancy can cause hair loss. But the good thing about it is that it's temporary. Okay. So some, there's something we call the effluviums, the telogen effluvium, anagen effluvium. So what happens is that in pregnancy, there's a whole lot of, there's a whole lot of hormonal imbalance. There's stress. And all these things can affect the hair cycle. Okay. So each hair goes and goes different phases. There's a phase where the hair grows. There's a phase where the hair is likely to, is friable and likely to fall off. Oh. So in situation of pregnancy, stress, and other conditions. You have many hairs falling into that phase where they are fragile and they fall off. So, in fact, it usually often happens even after pregnancy, short after pregnancy. Yes. You just have many hairs become very fragile and they fall off. But in most cases, it does grow back. Some, but the time to growth can now vary. Some people are lucky, it's a few months, some people even more up to a year. But anyway, well, our next feature beckons now. Okay. We continue this conversation because uh, <laughs> I want to know who needs transplant, who does. I can't wait to. Okay, okay. now. So you know how, um, now there's when you go to uh, some primary and secondary schools, mm -hmm. you could see children, maybe as some mothers make their so to sew hairstyle, some of them make the same for their daughters. And we do know that when we went to secondary school, primary school, there were styles that you could wear. And oftentimes, Absolutely. colors as well. Absolutely. We want to know now, do schools, do those practice still hold sway in this day? Or how flexible are schools now, especially when it pertains to children and how the hairstyles they can bring to school? Mm. Schools and hairstyles for our children. We will be having 25.06. what? School is an educational institution designed to provide learning spaces and environment for students under the guidance of teachers to enable them become disciplined and responsible members of the society. Use your beaker to collect acid from the volumetric flux. 
Rules and regulations in schools are therefore essential for students. As such, some schools introduce hairstyles for female students, perhaps to discipline and prevent discrimination amongst them. It's mainly to control um, the excesses of some students. You know, sometimes students have this um, nature of always doing whatever they like. But with the hairstyles, you have a more uniform situation whereby everybody is expected to be on um, a particular hairstyle. Schools in the 19th century allowed plates, look out for girls, and strictly look out for boys. In Nigeria today, both private and government schools include hairstyle policies and handbooks to parents and guardians are the point of entry to the school. During admission processes, they only ask, a few parents that have had to come in contact with, they only ask, do we have hairstyles? We, do we call hairstyles for female students? And um, by and large, I've not really had them reacting negatively. Rather, it was from our old parents. That was when we were having weekly hairstyles. So they raised, you know, dust because of the high economic situation of the country. So they complained about the weekly, it, it was making them spend more. So we now opted for giving them once in two weeks. 100% in support of giving students his style. The reason, apart from being in uniformity, it helped the children and the, rather the students to live the life, not to live the life of imitation and emulation. By the time anybody carry any hairstyle, every attention will be directed towards that head. And instead of spending more time in reading, they will focus more attention on address, uh, in plating hairs and uh, barbing their hairs. When you punish their, uh, their wards or their children, they will come quarreling. Why did you punish my child? Because of not doing uh, the hairstyle. Discipline in schools is the bridge between goals and accomplishment. Parents have the option. If you feel the hairstyle is going to be tasking for you, you go for the low cut. Whenever you come to an institution of learning, you are expected to obey the rules and regulations. And one of these is like schools that do give hairstyles. Because we also have schools that give low cut and expect everybody to be on low cut. So what happens to you as a parent is when you get into that system, you are uh, expected to just, you know, follow the instructions that you have. It's part of discipline anyway. In a society where there is no law, crime is non-existent. Therefore, a nation, institution, family or individual can only advance by obeying laid-down rules and regulations. Okay, from schools and hairstyles to relaxers and the natural way by Magdalene. Let's see this and then we can talk. Over time, one of the most famous arguments within the female folk is that it is better to maintain natural hair for unique looks than to get your hair relaxed or put other artificial products on the hair. While some argue that natural hair due to its thickness is difficult to maintain and requires a lot of money, effort and time. Others say it is well worth it. What side of the divide are you on? For me, I would say it's easy when you have all the necessary air treatments. Though it's a bit cost for you to get those treatments, but it's very easy when you get it. And it helps you to keep the hair healthy also. And you will enjoy yourself. Like when you keep it natural hair, you feel so good about you, yourself. You know that this is your hair because relaxed hair comes with a lot of breakage. And also, there's this kind of air retention that comes with if you are always relaxing your hair. So I don't think it's nice for someone to actually do that. Basically, I don't like braiding my hair because. I normally have pins. So normally my hairstyle is either I leave my hair like that or I gel. This is gel. And normally when you want to gel your hair, it's preferable you relax first. If not, it will not relax. You will not see that beauty that you are seeing. Because when it is not relaxed, your hair 
is hard. And when it is hard, it is difficult for the gel itself to get inside the hair. But when it is relaxed, it's soft. And it is easy for the gel to penetrate and for your hair to come out smooth. Different strokes for different folks. According to research, to maintain healthier hair, statistics reveal that hair relaxers may offer benefits for an individual to look in a certain way and it may be easier to style their hair. However, it is also important to note that there are also some drawbacks associated with some products. As some chemicals which are in some relaxers contain sodium hydroxide and may have adverse effects on hair and thereby cause damages to the follicles of the scalp. This is my natural hair. I use it to twist it kinky. And if you are doubting me, I feel loose one. Can I lose one for yeah, you? go ahead. Are you seeing it? Yeah. Are you still doubting? Let me see. Oh, wow. Are you still doubting? Wow, no, 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 no. I'm not doubting. Okay. Okay, you can twist it back. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Then when you don't want to leave it like you can fold the mouth. Oh, do you even mean that you can also use natural hair to, to style? Any yes, style yes, of any your style, any style of your choice. Research also shows that happy hair is healthy hair. And if well nurtured and cared for in its natural states, the benefits are enormous. Here are some tips towards achieving a healthy hairstyle. Wash your hair regularly. Avoid overstyling and overexposure to heat. Use products that are not harsh in nature so it does not affect your hair scalp. Eat proteinous food and lots of vitamins for hair growth. Comb your hair regularly. Use a suitable conditioner for hair scalp. Visit an expert who understands hair growth, hair damage hair texture, and other matters about our hair. As long as one can choose any preferred hair type, it is important to understand what suits you and what it entails to maintain hairstyles you like and if they are in the best healthy interest of your hair. That's the payoff line for many of us. Perhaps we don't heed it as often as we do. Do what is in the best healthy interest of your hair. Of your hair. Not for <laughs> you, not for your glamorous self, for your hair. If you want your hair to stand the test of, of time. time. And it's our hair standing the test of time and getting help where <laughs> needed at the right time is the thrust of our conversation with Dr. Boyega or Larry Oye, consultant physician and dermatologist. The right advice <laughs> at the right time is what we need now. Honestly. And I know many women all over the globe are talking about hair, hair, how to maintain, how to preserve. And then when preservation fails, how to now have a resounding comeback. The, the narratives that can bring hair back to its former state. Yes. But you are at the point where you were comparing our hair, our scalp, to a plot of land and grass. <laughs> <laughs> some soil is dead. There's no hope. So some parts of the scalp, hair may not grow there again on its own. And that's yes. where we may need you. Yes. My curious question. Hair transplant. Where are you getting that hair from? Is it from other parts of the person's body? Okay, well, so, okay, so for conventional hair transplants, okay. um, we usually take hair from the back of the, from the, back of the scalp. Oh, okay. Yeah, so general thing is um, the hair at the back here is, is more resilient. Yeah. It occurs, yeah. it's more, you have more hair. It's fuller, always it's, fuller. Yes, Why would it's you just fuller. come to the front? Yeah, so that means you can take some hair there without leaving an overall deficiency behind. Yeah. Then particularly for those that have balding, or for those that have genetic balding, the hair at the back is not susceptible to balding. If you notice, most people that are bald, there's still a residual hair there. Yeah, sure. So when you take it from the back and you bring it in front, it carries along with it those properties mm. of being resilient. 
So once you bring the hair and you put it there, it's there, it stays. There's no caveat. It's there. Okay, the process is it painful? I don't like. I have a <laughs> little threshold for pain. I will take it. They'll give you an. Uh, uh, they'll give you an. Let Dr. Now. Tell us now. <laughs> okay, so, okay, so I think let me even expand it a bit more. Okay. So generally, hair transplant is is relatively very safe, um, if with the appropriate patient selection. It's very safe. The appropriate patient patients. selection. Yeah, yeah, you need to select patients. Because I know adults. of one um, Nollywood actor that, you know, some young men start to go bald early. Mm. In times past, we all thought it was from your 50s yeah, that, you, that yeah. you start going bald. But now mm, somebody in their younger. late 20s mm. or early 30s, 30s will start to go bald. Yes. Mm. Yes. They too can benefit mm. from hair yes. transplant. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The another thing why, um, for a younger person who has just started balding, and even the balding process, the balding is a, is a spectrum. Initially, one, be, one begins to bald. Oh. It's reversible, even without transplant. Oh. The things you can do, the medical grade treatments you can offer someone that started, just started balding, okay. that can bring back the hairs, even though you need to use the medication for, for a long time. Oh, okay. So at that point, where the hair is not completely gone, oh. at that young age, there are some things you can do to ameliorate it without having to resort to transplant eventually. Okay. Is that a real? I mean, it's real now. It's real, real, real in the sense that all the spiritual doctor. Mm. Join. I mean, I what is that? <laughs> that's spiritual. What thing? Are some children is born that? Huh? Let doctor even tell us mm. what is the dada thing. Is this parents in a refusing? family where yeah. they have normal hair? One child will come out with. Is that it just dada? parents saying, "I will not comb this one's hair," and they just tell us that the child refused? I don't understand. Uh, I think it's an admixture of many things. Okay. Um, there's also the genetic inherent component that comes along with it. For some children, um, hair goes in, hair, hair is in different phases. Mm. Each individual hair occurs in different phases. Um, there's what we call the anagen phase, where the hair just grows and it continues to grow long. It takes between two to five years in each person. Mm -hmm. um, so in people that have that, that mm. their, their hairs have the tendency to grow very long. We go to a bado now, Dada. How did it start? Tell us. Children are a special gift from God and they are treasured by their parents who take care of them. There are children born with special features like dreadlocks, also known as dada in Yoruba language. A child born with natural dreadlocks is unique, especially among some African countries, and they ascribe to them somewhat spiritual capabilities, such as gift of healing and ability to foresee the future, among others. In Nigeria, especially among the Yorubas, Dada is a name given to children born with dreadlocks, and such child is believed to be associated with powers and magic. Islam believes that every creation has its own speciality, uniqueness. So when this one is being exhibited, you will now be talking of supernatural, extraordinary. The people born with um, threads and their heads are specially gifted children by God. They are spiritually endowed. It doesn't mean that they have to be perfect, but they are, they are, they are, they are given for a specific purpose that God knows. It could be a blessing into the family. It could be a kind of protection for the children themselves. It could be um, any, any reason. Only God knows. In some traditional cultures, they believe that dreadlocks are one to manifest spiritual powers and help conjure spirits. Dada is a spiritual person. It's not just ordinary people who want to be the Dada. He was inborn a natural child that had been sent to the world by Oludumari for the one particular family. Generally, people believe their strength and overall good health are tied to their heir and must not be handled casually. Apart from their mother, no other person touches the heir. And if any person does it in error, such person must give money to the child or tie a carry to their dreadlocks to prevent the child from falling sick. It might be just awaken one day and say, I want to cut my hair. And when before the other certain things is going to be performing, they have to follow some spiritual steps, like using some uh, e goat, 
for them, because they are special person, for, for the blessing for the particular child, blessing for the family also, so that when people mistakenly knock them on the, on the hair, it might not be affecting them. That is why they have to do some certain rituals before they can cut the head of any dead block or the, or the natural born children with the dada or baby. How does people perceive children living with dreadlocks and what were the challenges they face growing up? When I wanted to get my admission into um, university, they were discriminating like, ah, they cannot have some um, like that have my hair in their school and all like that. But my dad was like, mm, guy, let's go. Let's go to where they will accept you. But God be the glory, they accepted me and it has been like this. It wasn't easy growing up with dreadlocks especially um, in this area that I grew up in Nibado. I had these um, challenges where I'm being bullied by my peers, the way they will follow me around chanting, da, 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 you know, this annoying thing. So that those times, I'll come home, I'll cry, tell my parents, I'll tell them, sir, I want to get rid of this, I want to cut it, but it keeps telling me one thing, that. Like, it is not time that God is telling him or give him any message to cut off the air or something like that. Whatever means you want to believe, children born with dreadlocks, dada, are normal children and should be treated equally in the society. Okay, dada, interesting thing going on there. Okay, our doctor is in the house, Dr. Boega. Are there things we are doing that is harming our hair, especially, let me take for example, relaxers. What are the effects, the long effects of relaxer, constant use? Okay, so yes, um, generally relaxers are, people use it for two main reasons. One is to straighten the hair and make it easy to manage. And second of all is to make it what we call Eurocentric, make it look foreign. Um, relaxer is a menace, if I can use the word. Uh, in at least in the context, if I can use that word, um, what it does is over time, especially if it's used frequently or the wrong products are used or the products are not titrated with the needs of the particular individual, what it does over time is that it destroys the hair. It and it does not just, this, it destroys it from the inner root itself. So it modifies the hair and over time, the hair becomes damaged, the hair becomes weakened and there's eventual hair loss and even scalp damage as well so um and the unfortunate thing is um when you, it, the damage is not clear it's not obvious in the very beginning so over a long time you begin to have gradual hair damage gradual hair damage still you cannot eventually have permanent hair loss there's a condition called ccca um okay. sequential um, centrifugal alopecia it's common in blacks quite common in black africa and it's actually a common cause of hair loss that we see in the clinics so in that case you have near permanent hair loss that starts in the middle and goes like this. So it's quite common and unfortunately it happens long after these things have been used over a long period of damage and it shows that it actually causes irreversible hair loss. Hmm. So that is not even the one that is not amenable to transplant. Thank you so much. It's been phenomenal. I knew you'd get to a point where you say we should come see you. You will not really release the He's information that I really need. He's because this edgy is coconut oil, my everything. I've seen all those things He's you mentioned. But don't worry. Don't worry. It will be fine with the edges and fine with you. Yeah. We'll reach out. We'll, and many women too. Even the men who have taken note of what you have said today, they know it's big gist, and we'll see how we can make it happen. Dr. Boyega Olari Oye, consultant yeah. physician and dermatologist, it's been fantastic having you come. Uh, thank you very much for having us on me. Weekend Do. It's been all about hair. Our hair carries the strength of our spirit and the wisdom of our body. It is a complete picture of our DNA, so we must take care of our hair. We must grow it. Tell so me. all those wonderful ladies talking about edges, there's hope. Do treatment, ask your stylist what you can do. Listen to them, reduce your use of relaxers. Get your hair right, it can happen. Hope never dies. Hope Don't never dies. Bye. 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 Goodbye.